Hey guys, it's Vmasters Reactions, and we're back with episode 6 for X-Men 97. Last we saw, we got Remember It, and it was the attack on Genosha. I did see in the comments people were saying it is millions of people that just died. I just wasn't sure how many mutants there were on that place, like in Genosha. I, I figured there was a lot. I know it is where everyone went mutant-wise to to live and coexist in harmony and all that stuff. I just didn't think there were that many mutants. Like in the X-Men movies and stuff, granted these are movies and I'm sure they're not exactly canon to the comic book universe. I did see that comment multiple times, so whether or not that's right or accurate, I'm not sure, but I assume it is because like I said, multiple people were saying it was millions of people. So that's insane. We saw Magneto die I don't know if he did exactly, but the giant Godzilla Sentinel fired a blast at him and it was reading his heat signature or body signatures and there was no more because it was like exterminated or terminated or whatever the hell it said and it walked away. Then Gambit went into action. It's like, I love Gambit. I've said this before in, in previous episodes. One of my favorite X-Men slash comic book characters growing up of all time. Wolverine was always in the forefront, but I feel like as a young kid, you always go to Wolverine. Of all the obscure, because I'd call him obscure being he's never been in a movie besides the Wolverine Origins movie, which was for like five milliseconds and never really showed what he truly was capable of. Gambit is probably one of my, if not favorite, of the ones that no one talks about or the ones that weren't really front and center throughout the last 20 years of movies. Regardless, he jumps into action, knocks Rogue out of the way with his bike, and then uses his ability to surge energy through things. I'm not 100% clear what he is fully capable of, but he was able to destroy and blow up this entire Godzilla Sentinel that was thousands of feet high. People were saying Godzilla is like a thousand feet high. This thing was like thousands, maybe tens of thousands of feet high, monstrously large, and Gambit took it out. But Genosha was taken down. We aren't going to deal with that, though, because that in the in the recap was just nothing spoke. Well, they did speak of it, but it is life death, too. I was saying this last episode, how they're skipping one and we're going to get life death, too, because life death one happened halfway through the Mojo episode in episode four. Either way, I'm wearing my Chucky shirt because tonight is also Chucky season three, part two, episode six. There's only four episodes in part two. So this is the second of four coming out tonight. I'm doing that as it happens too. I do it live with commercials and all, and then I get it right up to Patreon and then out to you guys. Also, people were asking, why are there so many exclusives on Patreon? I probably should tell you guys, if you subscribe to a certain tier on Patreon, you are able to request any show you want. That is why there's so many exclusives over there. People go to the tier level, ask me to watch any show under the sun and I watch it. You could do movies, you could do shows, anything you want over on Patreon. That's why we have Peaky Blinders, Doctor Who, Person of Interest. We're doing Shogun, X-Men 97, Delicious in Dungeon, and Hell of a Boss on YouTube and Patreon. We're also going to do Cobra Kai, Stranger Things. We just finished Avatar, Jackie Chan movies every month, thousands of other movies and shows in the description, full and edited everything. Patreon link. If not, episode six, X-Men 97. Let's do it. Theme song activated. Wait a second. Oh wait, never mind. Wait, I don't know. Are we seeing new things? Like that? What is all this? Excellent. All right, here we go. Life Death Part Two. We're in a war. Are we gonna get Cable too? Cause this is like future shit. This is definitely some future shit going on. This might be Cable and Bishop. This is like Gladiator, right? It looks like it looks like Gladiator type people. Surrender. Stand free. This pigeon shall not thwart the, the will of the supreme intelligence. What is going on? Look, the Gladiator, right? That looks like yeah. Is that Adam Warlock? This started off with a bang. Fall at my feet, Ronan. I was gonna say he has the hammer. I'm like, is that Ronan? He just looks different. My dearest sister is 
Always so, stuck it her priority. heel through his cheek. No ordinary oh. Terran helps spare the entire universe from the madness Xavier. of Xavier. now, in his greatest feat yet, with joy, look at that Viking lady with four eyes. Lord, for your empress is to be married. So much is happening that I didn't expect to see. Professor Charles Xavier. What timeline is this? We were all talking about this before, how this show was going to have no Charles Xavier. My subjects trust me when I say you are no mere Terran, Charles. Didn't your brother nearly destroy the universe with the Emkron crystal? Use a hologlobe. Invite them to the wedding. Once we crush the Kree, an educator such as you can teach them our ways. Much like my legs in this armor's exoskeleton. All ruling is make-believe. Will you at least consider Earth? The virtue of a teacher lies in showing their students how to walk on their own. Good way to put Only it. Only if he is sure there are no more lessons he can teach them. Very well put, Charles. He's got an exoskeleton that makes him walk. And we're the adversary guy. How, how does the adversary work? Gifts. Is it in our how mind? How many slaves leave him? Well, it's not they in her mind because it bit him. not. Break me. All lives deserve saving, even his. Like, is it in her mind right now? It obviously was real, because it bit Forge. Let him die. Look the other way. It reminds me of something from Secret of Nim. Some sinister beast. This, this has got to be like a dream sequence of some sort. refuge with this monotone family. Enough. Could you follow? I was wrong. I cannot breathe. You turned your back on these paths. Forge just used. I tear your friend. Proton and pack break to your catch loom. it. Depart. Forge has an on cannon proton pack when you catch a ghost. Ghostbuster Forge. How glorious. Probably really fucked up now. Mom, practice doesn't matter. Perhaps your mother's book holds an answer. Forge is gonna die. She wrote about a cacti. Grows in nearby caves. Gotta get the cacti. Sunlight. I don't want to be alone. Forge has to go on the then journey. Ride together. Yes. My love. You gotta go on the journey. Your Majesty. He was making faces before. I have known before. you since you were but a hatchling, and wish only for your happiness. Araki sugars his words, my sister. A union with the Terran would bind the Shi'ar into an alliance in this group. with his inferior homeworld. Your Empress and I decide alliances, as well as which world we call home. I must invoke the right of Emdasha. I finish that volume my second day here, Deathbird. You must remember Renounce Earth and erase all memory of your life there. What? Charles Xavier. Stuff like this pisses me off. Of Earth like you, in general, dude. this person just flies in and goes like, "Hey, I don't like you. I want you Shara, to do this." And we're like, "All right, I guess we'll do it." No, I don't have to freaking bow to you. Mm, once enemy <laughs> shit death Mary to bring harmony to the universe. I do not know this. He's got like the Yondu. Hey, Terran. Yes. Wise for a Terran. Yes. His name is Magnus. Even you know Deathbird's challenge goes too far. Yes, that's my point. On Earth, exactly. You tirelessly it isn't about home. love, so let's just compromise and give in to all the stupidity. You saved my life. Xavier might do Your it. Your devotion is beyond measure. I shouldn't even be here, so I guess I could give you all my memories of Earth. Mental! Like, I might as well just be a brand new person. Eat shit, Deathbird. I would die if we. I mean, the DeLorean was 1885. Forge needs a cacti. I love the conversation. Where? But we're running out of time. Oh, great. We got to crawl through a mine shaft. You could have told us that earlier, Forge. I have a feeling this is all going to backfire. Look at his shitty face. Why would you ever do anything a guy with a shitty face like that has to say? Look at her face. Look at the... It, it's like one of those things like when you have a Decepticon. Yeah. Why would you listen to a guy whose name is a Decepticon? Arrest this yes. Vulture. I was just going to say, get this bitch out of here. Just come in here starting shit. Beautiful. Thank you, Gladiator. I'm so happy Gladiator stepped in and did this. Gladiator is just like beating the shit out of everybody. Here. Class is now in session. Class is now in session. Oh, oh my god, he sat him all at tables. What have you done? Gladiator, please raise your hand if you have a question. He took all of these high-powered people into the astral plane 
of a classroom like children. The high road storm. The adversary's got to be in her own mind to a certain extent. It's not real, Storm. It's not real. You're not a daydream. Not a daydream. Was not the only weapon tamping down my gifts. It's myself. There was that lie. And I believed it. The winds are the kicking lie. up. She's Deny getting her abilities power. back. We are calling on the thunder. Thunder? For I am lightning. Crazy shit. I would love it if after all this, Forge is like, I'm not even sick. I just was trying to get your abilities back. She just shot a hole through the moon. You can see it from the satellites. She went quite extreme. Listen to the music. <laughs> Even though it's awesomely beautiful. What are demons but reflections of our fears and shame? Yes. Oh. We finally heal our adversary. Wonderful. By embracing it. Should we? Whisk away to some tropical island? Yes. Not an entirely unpleasant idea. She's going to be like, now I have to go back. Got to return. From the crushed skulls that house inferior minds. A lot of aggression. Why do we let her in any room, ever? Take an apple. You strike at the knees and claim you can help them walk again might even call it nonsense. Anyone who has a face like him or Deathbird should immediately be taken. And all children of the atom. Children of the atom. Love it. That's the game. What was that all about? What is happening? Gambit? No. No. He's seeing what happened of Genosha. My children of the atom destroyed. No. He said children of the Adam and he saw Earth. all the insanity. Immediately. The unthinkable has happened. Charles, if you leave, you will prove my sister right about your kind. Sorry. If end, our star-crossed affair. Then let it be so. so. Be it. Yes. It is time I return to my X-Men. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's it? Oh no, there's more. I beg you. Don't take all the blame, Oliver. Sinister. Genosha was merely the beginning of a prologue. Now pass. Place your faith in Sinister. <laughs> all right, there's our next episode. All right, everybody, that is it for episode six of X-Men Life Death Part Two. So they pulled the wool over my eyes. They tricked me in a sense because I thought this whole episode was going to focus on Storm and Forge. It was probably less than half of the episode and quickly we got to the conclusion that storm fixes forge and a lot of what's going on with the adversaries in her head we destroy the adversary in the beginning or at least forge uses ghostbuster magic and reels it in takes it out of the equation but then storm is letting it get to her in her own mind she has to conquer it and therefore blows like the craziest storm patterns out of the earth and goes up into the heavens and then comes back and we got the cactus stuff and, and Forge is healed. Then he's like, yo, let's go to a tropical island and take a break. And she seemed like she wasn't against it until she saw on the news that Genosha was destroyed. So that was pretty much everything dealing with Forge and Storm. The best and coolest part of all this, nothing against Storm and Forge, is Xavier's alive. He's alive in an exoskeleton that's allowing him to walk. He's about to marry this queen or princess, whatever the hell her title is, empress, I guess they called her, gladiators there, Deathbird, her shitty sister, is starting basically a civil war. It's funny because I'm about to go watch the Civil War movie. But why do we let people like this into a room and start shit? You should immediately be taken out of the room when you're that kind of person. At a point, she eventually is like, all right, Gladiator, could you step in because this is getting out of hand? I don't even know why we let it get that far. We let her walk into the room. I am activating rule such and such where she's like, I'm going to have Xavier's mind wiped. I, we can't have him know anything of his people or Earth. Like, what do you fucking talking about you crazy bitch the fact that he even like entertained the idea is blowing my mind i said it multiple times what is the sense of living if you give up everything that you are if you said like jay you're about to die but i could save your life the only thing is you gotta like lose every memory you ever had of everyone you ever loved then why even live it's not worth living to me. I'm a different person. I would be a, a totally different person. I might as well die because what good is 
sacrifice if you're it just doesn't make sense to me and Xavier at the end there is like all right enough's enough he was about to do it he kind of like gave in thinking well you did save my life so I should show you some respect or show you that I too will make a sacrifice but she didn't make a sacrifice like that she just like saved you and she's still who she is so bullshit and, and, and even if you made that choice, do it for better reasons than some mental case coming in telling you this is what I want you to do and you just uh, submit. Good thing he didn't do it. He sits him down in a mental classroom where they're all at little desks like children. He even tells Gladiator, raise your hand if you got a question. When Gladiator is like this supreme being, but Xavier obviously is better. Then we're talking Children of the Atom, the game from the late 90s, early 2000s, and he immediately thinks of all his children, sees a giant Gambit, and everyone gets turned to skeletons, including himself. Gambit was the one that did take out the Godzilla Sentinel, so that is why he rose as high as he did, I'm assuming. And then Xavier's like, screw all this shit. I gotta go home. I don't give a shit what you think or, or uh, of this or whatever. I need my X-Men, and I'm totally on board with it. And then at the end, we see Sinister is going to rise up in the place of everything chaotic going on with the mutants. So I'm going to go edit this up. You guys want to see more of what I do in the description of every video is a link for Patreon. You'll see these in full as soon as they come out. I throw them up on Patreon. Same thing with Chucky Season 3 Part 2 that comes out tonight. Shogun Finale is this coming week. The finale of Shogun, one of my favorite shows right now on TV. Delicious in Dungeon is tomorrow. Jackie Chan movies every month. Like I said, if you go over to Patreon, you could request or ask for any movie or show you want under the sun and I will watch it. That's why there's so many exclusives over there like Peaky Blinders, Doctor Who, Person of Interest, Avatar, True Detective, Percy Jackson, thousands of movies and shows all in full unedited. In the description is the link for Patreon. If not, comments down below, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace!